the six simple machines are at the heart of every single Rube Goldberg or chain reaction you've ever seen. Integrating the six simple machines in a creative yet effective way is vital to your success when doing a Rube Goldberg project. Levers, pulleys, screws, wedges, incline planes, wheel and axles. These mechanical interactions serve as critical triggers to help advance a Rube Goldberg machine from one step to another. Lever. A lever is like a playground seesaw. Just as you can lift a friend off the ground, using a lever is a great way to lift heavy things with little effort. One finger even. By adjusting the fulcrum or pivot point, we adjust how much weight is necessary in order to lift the opposite end. For example, using this heavy tire and bowling ball is not enough to lift even that tiny little bunny, which to prove that it's not locked down, it's all about balance. In a Rube Goldberg machine, we can use a lever in a whole number of ways. For example, in this classic idea, we can drop an object onto a seesaw to tip to roll on the opposite side. While that was effective in transferring the energy, we can do far more creative things using a lever. For example, with a simple change of the seesaw, we can instead free the bunny from his cage. Who doesn't love a catapult? But if you really want to impress someone with your creativity, then take this example that I use in quite a number of my professional machine builds. Here again, we still have a seesaw but all it is is a post holding up one end. All it takes is a very small foot to cause it to go. And the tire rolls along to me. Dominoes do count as a type of lever. However, if you haven't already watched my video, check out why I say dominoes are a recipe for disaster in a Rube Goldberg machine. Case in point. I don't like them. You will absolutely receive a lower creativity score if you do decide to use dominoes. In fact, the rule book highly discourages their usage. Rolling away from domino debacles, we move on to our next simple machine type, the wheel and axle. If you've ever ridden in a car, used a bicycle, or gone to a grocery store and used a grocery cart, then you've already incorporated this simple machine into your life to make it easier. In a Rube Goldberg machine, adding a wheel and axle is an excellent way to help you cover some distance. The natural choice people normally gravitate towards is a toy car on a toy track, which it works, but it's not all that creative and a car is really, really small and doesn't have really much potential energy. However, let's just do the very common pairing of a toy car and dominoes. Three, two, one. Again, it works, but is it creative? No. This is the most common pairing that we see in every level of competition. And that right there, a toy car and some dominoes, is gonna receive a very, very low score, whether at the National Rue Goldberg Contest, the Invention Convention, or if you're just building it at home. So what else can we do? Well, this tiny toy car might be able to knock over that book with more force i.e. we can increase the angle. That's something pretty common that a lot of students do. So, increase the height, created a steeper angle. Let's see if the tiny toy car will work. Three, two, one. Of course not. It still was never going to work. It's a tiny toy car. That's my point. We want to replace this, the car, something very commonly used and something that kids are very attached to. We need to replace this with a better everyday object that's going to be able to knock over that book. Always remember, bigger is better and also using more everyday objects. Things like a roller skate or this skateboard, attaching this hockey stick on it and just with a little bit of force, it's gonna be able to knock over the book way easier than that tiny little toy car and it's for sure stuff that you have lying around. The perfect pairing to the wheel and axle is the incline plane. Think of it as a ramp or a slide. How will smooth things up and down much easier? The lower the angle, the gentler the slope. However, the steeper the ramp, the steeper the incline plane, the faster 
the object. Just make sure not to overdo it. The most common incline planes I see are Hot Wheel tracks. However, we can certainly do much better than that. In an example from one of my past machines, the hammer gets released, swings down, and knocks into the paint can. Being only half filled, or half empty depending on your view of life, the viscosity of the paint inside slows the paint can's roll, ultimately creating what looks like a risky step that might fail, when in reality it's incredibly reliable and far more interesting. Incline planes are also useful because they can help us change directions or keep objects on their intended path. For example, this overall module is part of the machine that I built right here at the Fairbanks Museum. This ball rolls down the incline planes into the mousetrap, pulling the chain, causing the tractor to pull back, and then we get a nice release of... <coughs> All those balls. It's really fun having to reset this every single time. Pulleys are probably some of my favorite simple machines to incorporate in chain reactions. They're great because, well, they help us lift heavy things from place to place, or much like an elevator, bring cargo from floor to floor. Unlike an elevator, I tend to want to move at a little faster speed. Pulleys can certainly help hold and release vast amounts of weight. Hunters sometimes utilize a form of pulley when trying to capture their prey. Depending on what direction of force I need, I can add however many pulleys I want until I reach the desired outcome. In fact, I don't always need to lift or release a weight to use a pulley. For example, I have this fan here attached to the tractor via string. When activated, all that's gonna happen is the fan is simply just pulling the tractor into the fan. If I add just one pulley, the fan can now pull the tractor 90 degrees. Depending on how you orient your string around the pulley, we can now have the fan pull the tractor in the opposite direction, which, as you can see, that'll certainly help the flow of the machine. I'm certainly a fan of doing this. Sorry, that. Here's a hint from a pro. You don't need to run out to a hardware store to be able to include a pulley in your project. Door frames, upside down stools, tables, and more all have the potential to be converted into a pulley. Tying a towel or socks to a post is a great way to keep your line at the level you want while still utilizing everyday objects. Four down and two to go. We're not screwing around here. <laughs> the last two simple machines are definitely the ones that are more neglected in the Rube Goldberg world. However, they do offer some fantastic opportunities for extra creativity that's gonna impress anybody if watching your project. Think of a screw like a twisty road climbing a mountain. As you turn the screw, it moves through a surface just like a car on a winding road trying to reach the summit. Every year someone asks, and the answer is no. Unfortunately, we can't count the actual screws that are used to build your machine. Nice try though, because technically it is correct. However, they're not a part of the chain reaction. To help our younger inventors, we do consider objects circling funnels as an acceptable type of screw. As long as your rolling object rotates in an up or downward spiral, we'll count that. Two common screws people use in their everyday lives include water faucet handles, as well as doorknobs. We can incorporate this into a Rube Goldberg machine by adding a string on top of the water handle, putting a piece of duct tape simply over the top for stability, wrap it around counterclockwise, and add a weight. When the weight drops, three, two, one, that causes the water to begin to flow out of the faucet. We can then capsule that water to do a whole myriad of things. For example, let's add on a water balloon. Again, try again. Three, two, one. Water balloon begins to fill. That sinking action can do quite a lot of things. Pull, or in a second it can make a gigantic mess. Case in point. Maybe you have that water spray on something. Like my cameraman. Wedging itself into our last simple machine slot, the Humble Wedge. Support. 
perfect. Not really, because the door opens that way. Imagine a wedge as a kitchen knife. Like a knife cuts through food by concentrating force on the blade, a wedge helps us split things apart. Wedges are easily the least seen simple machine. However, it doesn't have to be that way. Ever used a pair of scissors? They certainly split things apart and are considered a type of wedge. By adding a couple zip ties to the side of something, along with heavy weight and a nice taut string, you can certainly split a string. Ready? In three, two, one. There we go. Success, right? Let's reverse that logic. And with this, we're building a wedge into the overall structure. What I mean by that is I've attached a string to this bottom block, or it's gonna be a wedge that gets removed. It's gonna cause the tower to collapse. The object on top is gonna to then be free to swing and trigger the next step. Let's see how it works. <laughs> Mr. Bowens gets a swing around and you could easily put this in something and you can see I now have created a pendulum effect. We can see this step idea played out in this machine designed to help retrieve a hat. As the cup slides out of place, the tower crumbles and we finally get to see a pig fly. Now that you've learned about each type of simple machine, let's put your skills to the test by checking out the simple machines in these Rube Goldbergs. See if you can point out every single one because I'll give you a hint, all six are included. The garage door opens, which pulls the string, opening all the different drawers of the file cabinet, releasing the hammer, which then kicks the paint can down to roll down the ramp. That then is gonna fall into a bicycle helmet, pushing the dolly forward, pulling a string, causing a paintbrush to flip a switch, activating a drill. The drill, connected to a punching glove, is going to push a bucket over the edge, pulling a string, turning on a wood planer. That wood is then gonna get sucked into that machine, dropping a weight, and causing a wedge to wedge open a refrigerator door, thus allowing my dog Buddy to access all the sweet treats that are hidden inside. Let me know how you did in the comments. Using simple machines in new and creative ways can certainly be a little tricky, but thankfully, I'm here to help. Starting October 2023, on the first Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Zone, I'll be holding live Q&A sessions right here on my YouTube channel, Zach's Contraptions. Feel free to stop by and ask me questions regarding your machine builds, step counts, rulebook clarifications, or to chat about anything Rube Goldberg related. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on more of my mind-boggling content. Until next time, keep those bones rattling. No. That, that joke should be extinct.